So I'm just doing a display test on this thing. It's got some diagnostics modes. If you basically hold down the home button as you pair it up, it goes to diagnostic mode. And one of the things you can actually do is test the display and bring everything up, all the segments, all the digits. And you can see from this test how the variations are in brightness across this. So you can see these ones are much brighter than these ones here. All right, especially here. These are quite dark. So you can see I've got some bad dimming on this display. So something I'd actually like to do is try and improve this. I don't know if I can or not, but yeah, it's probably worth a shot. I want to try and improve this if I can. If I can get a brand new display, I'll be happy with that. There are ways of doing like a rejuvenation on the display by putting a bit of extra voltage into them to burn off any issues with the filaments and basically restore them a little bit. It's not a complete fix all, it just gives it a bit more life. It probably shortens a lifetime overall, but initially at least gives it something which makes it usable again. So I've been trying different things. I've had this up from the screen for a while now, and I actually noticed that, as you will see in the original video for this thing, the display was basically unreadable. We couldn't see it in my lighting. And it's been getting better and better, right? So obviously with it being off for a long period of time, it lost a lot. And having it being used a little bit has actually brought the display up a little bit, but it's not restored, obviously. It's got better. Definitely has got better from being used, but the display is definitely aged. I need to try and do something about that. I mean, I would like to replace it. And I haven't been able to source a new one yet, unfortunately. I'd be really surprised if I can find a new one anywhere. There's a way of rejuvenating the display, and I might actually give that a go very, very, very carefully. So I'm just going to investigate this filament stuff with the display. So I'm just going to measure voltages on there. I've got set two volts DC and AC at the same time. So we should be able to see what we're getting here. Now, the filament, I believe, is the two pins at each end of the display, right? So we've got these other individual ones which seem to go to these controllers. Um, but we've got these other big ones which have got these capacitors on them. So they should be DC. And you've got these two tracks that's come down onto this ribbon right there. So I actually think that that should just be a DC supply. Because these are both reference to the ground plane for these negative side of these capacitors. So I think they're both a positive DC supply onto each end. That's what I think is supposed to be there. Let's find out. Let's put power on. Let's turn the switch on. So if I touch the chassis... Well, I could be able to do it on the, on the plane up here actually. If I find a zero volt plane, I might just stick it on there. That's zero volts right there. Let's do that. So let's probe onto here first. Do this end. These pins are joined together. 5.9 volts, 2.7 volts AC. Really, 2.7 volts AC on there as well. Even though I've got a capacitor on it. Okay, let's check the other end. 5.9 volts, 2.8 volts AC. Right, so is that correct? Are these two capacitors here bad? Because I would have thought I've got capacitors on there, I shouldn't really be seeing much in the way of AC. Curious. So I've just been probing around trying to trace this DC and AC feed in. So it comes back here, there's a fuse on the board just over here, which is marked as F2, which you can't currently see in shot. You've got this wiring loom here, this goes to the transformer, and the orange wire which I'm probing on right now. I probe onto the connections on the display. Get your one ohm. If I do the yellow wire, 0.7 ohms. And if I do the next orange wire, there's two orange wires, that's interesting. 0.2 ohms. They have connections directly to this transformer here. So there's obviously something going on here which is feeding AC potentially straight in. I checked this big capacitor here because that was like an obvious candidate is that could be bad. That doesn't seem to have a direct connection to that so it's a bit curious. So I think it's basically got a 6.3 volt feed from the transformer which would be typical. That's you know 6.3 volts a common voltage in valve gear so it could well be it's a 6.3 volt filament voltage expected. So we're getting 6 volts DC. So the fact we've got so much AC on there as well, that's actually making me wonder a little bit about whether those capacitors on the back of the display are actually okay or not. I'm actually tempted to like put a second capacitor across one and just do a voltage check, see if it changes anything. Just put a capacitor across the supply rail and see if it changes it. Because I'm thinking it's only got very light regulation. I mean, I don't actually see much going on, actually. It's a bit hard to trace. There's no circuit diagrams for this thing out there. Not this section, certainly. The stuff for this board here, nothing on the digital board. There's no diagrams for this. No one's done one. 
there's nothing available. So it's a bit of reverse engineering going on here. The fact you've got the cables coming in here from the transformer means obviously it's main AC supply coming in. There's a bridge rectifier here. So it should be going through the bridge rectifier before it goes to the display, right? You'd think that. Or a bridge rectifier of some kind. I mean, there is a, another bridge down here as well. There's another smaller one, so maybe I'll trace from that. Let's try that one. Let's see if I can get something from there. In case maybe it's a blown bridge. You never know. Let's just probe onto here. No, it doesn't like it. That's the positive side of the bridge output. Negative side, you've got a little bit of a pulse there. Nothing. So there's nothing there from that bridge rectifier. Yeah, so I'm not actually sure what's going on there. It doesn't really seem to have much in the way of connections to the display apart from the AC. So I'm thinking that it's just a very lightly regulated supply. Let's check on the actual bridge rectifier itself over here, the big one. Yeah, again, nothing from that bridge itself. So I'm a little bit confused. I don't know VFD technology very well. I don't really know a lot about it. I know a minimal amount. So I'm kind of in the dark myself a little bit about how these things are working. I've played them a little bit in the past, like on the Datron multimeters. I did a display replacement. Um, but that was a very different setup. That was like negative 185 volts going into that thing. This is very different. So yeah, I I don't know. Not yet. I'm figuring it out. So I'll just try putting this 33 microfarad cap across each side, and I saw no difference on the display. So I don't think that is the problem. I think it's just slightly regulated. I think it's stalled. That's all. All right. See if you can see it's glowing. I've got it only barely glowing. I can barely see it myself. I don't know if it'll show up on camera. I can barely see anything. Go on slightly more. Here we go. So I'm currently running 9 volts of 300 milliamps into that. I'm just going to pulse it slightly and you'll see it come up in brightness quite a bit. And I'm just going to do this because I don't want to accidentally overdrive it and end up melting the filaments. Right, so I'm just going to give it a chance to cool, bring it back up. It's going to keep cycling it. So the most I'm going up to is about 400 milliamps, which is going in at about 15 volts, to be honest. Right, I'm just, so I'm just cycling it, I don't want to overdo it. I'm really nervous about overdoing it and blowing it up. Okay, because I'm actually seeing some unevenness even in the filaments. Even just the heating in the filaments looks a little bit uneven. The very top line is very dim, the middle, very middle line is very dim. The very bottom line is very dim. The rest look very similar, like as far as levels go. So there is some differences even in the filaments. You can probably see it on camera actually. You can see the top one, middle one, bottom one are a bit dimmer. You can kind of see that. We shall see if that's worked. <sighs> Nervous times. All right, moment of truth. Let's see if it's any brighter. Well, I can see it underneath my lighting, so it has to be slightly better. I can actually see it in my lighting now couldn't see it before. So yes, I think it has got slightly better, but maybe not enough. It's still very uneven. It turns the lights off so you can see it. But it has improved slightly. Not by much, but it is very slightly better. And it's definitely a lot more even than it was. Let me do the test mode. Yeah, it's definitely better. That is definitely improved. I'm going to do some more. Alright, I just did another set of cycles on it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that's definitely brighter again. Yeah, I'm definitely seeing improvement. No doubt about that. It's not as much improvement as I would have liked, but it's definitely improved. Okay, let's do the power on and check over here, display, yeah you can definitely see got a nice clear plus symbol here now with the plus signs often there, so it's definitely changed it, these ones here are getting more even, still got some dim ones here though, and obviously some characters showing up in here, but that's as you can see, 
much more even and consistent now across the actual individual digits themselves. So that's looking very promising. It does look like the phosphors in these middle ones here are not so good though. But that's an improvement. I'll turn some more lights off, maybe you can see a bit better. And it just blends it in more than that. But anyway, it's definitely an improvement. Yes, definitely. Much more even lighting now. So as you can see, that is looking much more even now. Previously, I could actually see like a bunch of cues in the bottom line and stuff like that. And you can see the number one in the second in the second digit over. You can see like a, a very clear one. And um, it's getting better. I actually think the more I've got this display on now, the phosphors are stabilizing more since I did that rejuvenation. It's actually it's definitely looking a lot more even between each digit. So I'm much happier with that. That's doing quite well. I'll turn the light on. Changes things slightly. Changes the display. I'll turn the other light on as well, studio light. It's kind of how we started out, I think. So yeah, that's still not perfect. You can still see some digits in there, like you can see the zero and the third digit there and the dot. So it's not wonderful, but it's definitely a huge improvement over what was there. I'm very happy with that. So I'll power this up now and see the whole display with normal text on it. You can see it's looking a lot better. That is a lot more even. Within each digit it's much more even. Obviously still got some differences here where these are brighter than these ones. But that does look a lot better. And I can actually see it fairly well myself with these lights on and stuff like that. Whereas obviously you can see it as well now on camera. Whereas before you probably couldn't have done. It's still very dim from what I'd like. I mean I'd, I'd like it brighter than that. And this area here is very dim, for example, and this is very dim over here too. I would like those brighter, but it's definitely made an improvement, so it's brought some more life out of the display at least. Hopefully until I can find a new one. Worst case is I'll have to reverse engineer it and replace the display with something else. That could be interesting. I don't really want to go there. <laughs>